Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. On this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, why one Texas cattleman is focusing on the things he can't see to protect his herd. Plus, how the right equipment can make or break quality hay production. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. Topping this week's cattle industry news, the National Cattlemen's Beef Association is urging Congress to pass a full five-year farm bill. The current version of the farm bill is an extension of the 2008 bill and is set to expire on September 30th of this year. The good news is a markup of the bill is expected to start making its way through the process yet this month. NCBA is working with the House and Senate Ag Committees to make sure NCBA priorities will be maintained. These include not having a livestock title, preserving conservation and research funding, as well as reauthorizing disaster programs. With a looming deadline, many leaders in Washington believe getting a farm bill passed quickly is extremely important. A lot of challenges. We, we really wanted to get it done last year. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I indicated that if we didn't get it done, it would be a lot tougher this year. Uh, and it's actually going to be a lot tougher because the, the savings that we thought we'd get from some of the steps that were proposed last year have been, have been substantially reduced by the Congressional Budget Office. And so it's a heavier lift this year. It's important that you have a farm bill, this comprehensive document that helps make sure that producers and processors and ultimately consumers have the resources necessary to make this miracle called American agriculture work. It's a bigger challenge this time because we have uh, money problems, fewer dollars will be spent on any farm bill, and from Rural America's perspective, every time we do a census every 10 years, the number of members of Congress who direct, who represent what we would call country districts get smaller and smaller. So we've got all those challenges to work our way through. But we'll get a farm bill done this year, and it will be that basic blueprint that will cover all of those critical areas. Because after all, we have made such an investment for generations now. It'd be a shame whether it's rural development or ag research or the commodity title crop insurance, uh, conservation programs. It'd be a shame to let all that lapse because it's guaranteed us a very available, high quality, affordable supply of food and fiber. We're still worried about getting a farm bill done. We're working under an extension of the 2008 bill that will be in place through the end of September. Uh, but if we don't get something done, there's a lot of question as, will we ever get another five-year farm bill? When you look at our priorities, though, we still feel very good that we're going to be able to keep the livestock title out of the farm bill, which is one of our top priorities. We also want to make sure that we have good funding for the conservation programs, good funding for research programs, and something that's probably even more important now than it was when we first started in the Farm Bill process was to make sure that the disaster programs are adequately funded to make sure that we have some help for producers that have been hit by this drought. The drought continues to be a serious concern as we head into the spring and summer months. We recently talked with a few members of Congress about the severe drought conditions they're facing in their own hometowns. We have more in this week's Cattlemen's Capital Concerns. We had some really terrible drought conditions and parts of the state was really bad. Uh, now, when it comes to row crop agriculture, we, we irrigate. So that wasn't as adversely affected as it was in other places, but in our state, you know, still there was a, there was a drag on that. But one of the things I've done this year is I've filed a bill to try to basically do like an early a, a warning system for drought uh, in other weather conditions. We think that'll help farmers. We think that uh, the Weather Service and others can work together and do this. We've had this in the past, and we want to make sure that it's there for people. It's not very expensive. It basically is probably a net plus in our economy because it helps people plan and make good decisions. And it's something basically that they can do and should be doing to make sure they provide that service. I'm a great believer in town meetings, and I go home every weekend. Linda Lucas runs the, the cow-calf operation back in western Oklahoma. So I'm in church with my neighbors, and I'm at the ball games and at all the events. In my area, the thing that has the greatest single stress on all of us is the ongoing drought. 
We're beginning year number three of probably the most horrendous drought in my part of the southwest since the 1950s. Uh, cow numbers are down, uh, herds are down, uh, you see a contraction in what uh, people are doing, the decisions they're making. That's the biggest single issue. But there's also a concern out there about the tax code. Uh, there's also a concern about sequestration. How will that affect uh, the processing of meat? Uh, all of the issues that deal around uh, what our energy costs going to be and will we have access to fertilizer and chemicals and will the EPA let us farm and ranch and, and all of those things. But the single biggest issue in my home community is Mother Nature going to rain on us this year for a change. Well, many cattlemen across the United States are still trying to recover from one of the most severe droughts on record. Some parts of the country are starting to see a little moisture. Joining me in the studio to talk about what kind of weather we can expect the rest of the year is Don Day Jr., president and meteorologist of Day Weather Incorporated. Thanks so much for coming to the show. Thanks for having me. Well, first of all, begin with your perspective on these weather patterns we've seen over the last 18 months or so. Well, we've really seen some contrast. Uh, 12, 18 months ago, we were having some really good precipitation in most areas of the country, some great snowpacks. Then we hit late 2011, and, and we know 2012. Mm -hmm. We've seen some big changes in the weather patterns, especially in the Pacific, which really had a big impact on 2012 to cause or was a big factor in our drought. Well, and is there any scientific explanation or reason for this terrible drought? Well, one thing we were learning, and we're learning this uh, each year a little bit better, is that the Pacific Ocean is critical, especially for the western and central areas of the United States. When the Pacific is cold, we tend to be dry in the west, the southwest, and the central part of the United States. Well, I think we call that La Nina. Mm -hmm. So anytime cattlemen here, a La Nina is coming, odds are that's going to be dry. And when we put a couple of La Ninas together, we can get really dry. Yeah. That's what we've seen here developing. So we're hoping 2013, 2014, that the Pacific gets a little bit warmer. And we are seeing a break, it seems. I mean, there's been some moisture, at least in some parts of the country. Do you think this is going to put a dent in, in the drought we've been experiencing? Small dents. Okay. Uh, I think we're definitely seeing some help. There are portions of Kansas, portions of southern, central, eastern Nebraska that have really uh, seen some benefit, as well as eastern Colorado. We're going to see that trend continue in April, and I think May as well. Um, it's not not going to get everybody. So there's going to be some winners and some losers out there, but we're looking at a better situation right now at this time than we were a year ago. That's really good news. And so what can we expect as you project out over the next six, eight months of 2013? Well, a little bit of good news, a little bit of bad news. Okay. So I'll do the bad news first. The bad news is 2013 is not the year we're going to go back and say that's the year we broke the drought. Mm. We're still going to have some challenges, especially in the Southern Rockies, and into the southern plains, southern Colorado, New Mexico, west Texas, the desert southwest, still see some dry problems there. But I do see a pattern developing that is, while it's going to be a little bit warmer than normal and a little drier than normal in still areas, it will not reach the severity of 2012. That is good news. And where can cattlemen go for weekly updates uh, on, on the weather? A great place to go is beef, beefusa.org. A great place to go. There will be weekly weather updates and a little bit of insight oh, as well and what you can expect. Very good. Well, thank you so much for coming to the show, and uh, we'll look forward to having you back again. Thanks for having me. For more information on Day Weather Incorporated or more on how the weather is affecting beef producers, just log on to our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Most of the profit loss that you see in an operation are things you don't see. Why one champion steer wrestler believes parasite control and common sense is the winning combination for a successful herd. Plus, what one group wants the world to know about the future of agriculture. We'll be right back. You're watching NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen on RFD TV. Respiratory disease is a significant animal health issue in the beef industry. It costs producers nearly a billion dollars in lost profits each year, and it's the most prevalent disease in calves older than 30 days. So why not prevent respiratory disease before it steals from your bottom line? Vista Once protects your calves with the most complete respiratory disease coverage available, and Vision Blackleg vaccines can add 14 pounds per calf at weaning. For further information, contact your local veterinarian or animal health supplier. It's deer season savings time. Just in time to get you ready for hay season. With 0% financing on John Deere mower conditioners, balers, and select hay tools. 
Plus, get 0% financing on all John Deere utility tractors up to 140 horsepower. It's the season for savings on hay tools and tractors. Deer season. Be sure to stop by today. There's an easier way to help protect your horse from West Nile virus. West Nile Innovator. No other vaccine has helped protect more horses. Talk to your veterinarian today. Welcome back. With grain and feed prices as high as they are, many cattlemen are working to maximize hay production and hay quality. One of the keys in achieving that goal is making sure you're using the right hay tools in the right way, especially your disc mower conditioner. Join us for a closer look on the disc mower conditioner as we look at cutting your hay crop to maximize quality hay production. Brad Bulla reports from Florida. Just outside Okeechobee, Florida, Fourth generation rancher David Hazelleaf has a full schedule. He tends a small herd of Watusi cattle just for fun, runs his own real estate company, and has a cow calf operation as well. We operate a beef cow operation. We, we run between four and 500 mother cows year round, and uh, we market our calves at, at four to 600 pounds, and they, we uh, sell them locally and then they're shipped to the grain states. In addition to caring for his cattle, David also grows and sells his own hay taking multiple cuttings each year to produce a bumper crop of round bales. Hay is very important. Uh, we bale all of our own hay. We bale uh, eight to 900 uh, round bales per year. Uh, we, we grow it all and in, in uh, times when there's an abundance of, of grass and we don't need to feed it, then we sell some of our hay. We cut it with a disc cutter. Uh, we cure it uh, two to three days. Sometimes we have to tend it and then naturally we fan it as much as possible. We come back in and, and uh, uh, when roll it up and bale it, and we also store this hay inside of a barn. With all the hay he puts up each year, David is a believer in the value of using a disc mower conditioner to cut his crop. I like it better because of the ability to uh, wind roll as much as I want to, as least as I want to, and to be able to condition my hay. Whereas if you just use a, a uh, sickle bar or a straight disc cutter without the conditioner, uh, you don't have the luxury of doing either one of those. And we don't cut crops such as oats, whether they would want to just lay them straight down and, and not condition them. So we have no reason not to use the disc cutter conditioner. Conditioning your hay is an important part of the whole cutting process. Um, you really need to know what you're trying to get out of your hay that you're cutting. Basically, the conditioning part of it allows the hay to be brought into, uh, whether being chopped by a forage harvester or baled by a baler sooner. The sooner that you can get that hay and forage into uh, the bale or the better because of the respiration process that's going on inside the hay. Seth Doman of New Holland Agriculture says producers have a wider array of options today when it comes to choosing disc mower conditioners that will deliver higher quality hay. I would say the first thing that you want to look at is really what kind of crops are you cutting and uh, by, by doing that you're able to then um, decide you know how should I condition that crop because each crop is conditioned and should be conditioned differently. The next thing that I would look at would be the size of the, you know, the, the machine that you're looking for and that really is dependent on how much you're cutting. You know we offer machines nine foot the whole way up to 15 foot seven and each of them come with different cutting uh, preferences you know you have the standard tongue design with the side pull or you have a center pivot design that allows the operator to, to pivot from side to side on uh, either end of the field when he's coming out or when he's going back in the disc bind includes several unique design features that set it apart from other disc mower conditioners the Momax cutter bar is a New Holland exclusive. Um, we have designed that cutter bar from ground up and basically the Momax cutter bar is individual modules that are separate from each module. New Holland is so confident in our cutter bar 
that we offer a three-year warranty on the Momax cutter bar to anyone who purchases the disc bind machine. The Shock Pro hub, basically if uh, while cutting, if the operator was to hit an obstruction, which is going to happen in, in uh, disc mowing applications, the, the brunt of the force of that obstruction is going to basically be impacted by the Shock Pro Hub. The Shock Pro Hub is then going to take the force, and that's the piece that's going to shear. It's a simple kit. It comes standard on every Momax cutter bar on the disc line and uh, can be field changed. In the, uh, in the field by the operator. And in seven to 10 minutes, he's back up and running, being able to mow with his New Holland disc bind. This is really the smart choice for every operator. In addition, producers have several different hitch choices, and they can also choose a unique swivel hitch that saves time in the field. The 10 foot four machine has an optional swivel hitch. It's excellent because it has a bent tongue. It's a side pull unit with a bent tongue and it allows the operator to basically turn at uh, above 90 degree angles when he's coming out of the crop or going into the crop or making his turn. And that's an excellent feature because basically uh, instead of worrying about whether the tractor tire is gonna hit the tongue, the hitch swivels around and allows the operator to then move right into the position of the crop uh, for the next round of cutting. Time saved in the field with a disc bind translates into faster cutting, faster dry down, and a quicker path to getting your hay baled and in the barn. Up next, we'll have more tips on the value of conditioning your hay crop. Stay with us. We'll be right back. New Holland is smart for the way you farm. And New Holland round balers are smart for the way you raise cattle. By focusing on making the densest bale possible, New Holland round balers pack more into each bale, saving you time, fuel, and money. Now that's smart. We can also match your feeding requirements with a variety of bale slicing, cutting, and wrapping options to help maximize your time. Plus, with models designed specifically for silage or specialty crop harvest, New Holland gives you the power to make smart choices to fit your farm or ranch. You work hard to get the most out of every hay season to benefit you and your cattle. From mower conditioners to balers and tractors, New Holland has the right solutions to help you make quality hay and forage for your cattle operation. Visit your New Holland dealer to learn more about the complete lineup of New Holland equipment, in addition to all the benefits available to cattle producers. Welcome back. With the drought facing so much of the country, the value of premium quality hay has never been greater. So let's head back to Florida to learn a bit more about the keys to producing the highest quality hay. With all his years spent raising cattle and making hay, Florida rancher David Hazelleaf has become a stickler when it comes to hay quality. Traditionally in Florida, we always made our hay in, in the fall. We, we grew it all summer and we cut it in the fall when the, when the weather permitted and we had low quality hay. Today we're trying to produce as much of it in the summer as we can and that makes a tremendous amount of difference in the quality and the protein and the palatability, everything to do with the hay. So what are some of the choices you can make to increase the quality of your hay? One is to lay down a wide swath when you cut your crop. Laying down a wide and thin swath is something that we promote because basically you're going to retain more of that nutritional value uh, by laying it out, having the sun dry it down quicker and the, the air uh, getting to it. Also that crop when you lay it out wide and thin it kind of sits right on top of the stubble and uh, if you have some moist ground that moist ground does then not affect uh, the, uh, the crop that it's laying on. You also are not going to have to ted your crop if um, you lay it out wide and thin because it's already laying about the size, uh, the width of the, the cut you know, that you have. So all that you have to do is come by and rake it once and you're good to go into a windrow. 
In addition, producers can choose New Holland's Wide Thin Fin Kit to help make dry down happen more quickly. The Wide Thin Fin Kit that's offered exclusively by New Holland is an excellent kit that allows the crop to uh, basically hit fins that we have mounted on the back of the swath board and the, the crop will fly through the air and basically, uh, you know, be swathed as wide, as wide or greater than the cutter bar itself and that allows that wide thin mat that will allow the crop to get dried down as quickly as possible. And choosing one of several conditioning systems New Holland offers, from leaning edge flails to chevron intermeshing rolls, can help retain the nutritional value of your hay. Right after the hay is cut, it's actually still growing using the starches and sugars that's inside the hay to make it grow. And those valuable nutrients are what's very important to retain in the crop. By retaining those starches and sugars, it allows uh, that crop to then be, have high nutrition value, which then goes right into the diet of the, uh, the animal that you're trying to feed. Conditioning allows the crop to retain that value because uh, it, dries the, it allows the crop to be dried down faster, allowing the nutrition to retain inside the crop and allowing you to bale or chop sooner. So this crop was just cut a couple minutes ago and what I want to do is I want to see how well it was conditioned by the New Holland. So I'm going to dive in here right into the middle. This is triticale, so it's a long stemmy crop that has a head at the top and what I'm looking for are those crimping points. So as you can see about every three inches You've got your crimping points for a bend or a break in the stem. And right there is where that crop is going to start to dry down as quickly as possible. You'll also see other areas where the crushing process has happened. Doman says producers should also check the operator's manual for their disc bind to set the appropriate roll gap and roll pressure. This will provide the conditioning they want for their specific crop conditions to maximize hay quality. This should be checked every time the operator switches to a different crop. Reporting from Okeechobee, Florida, I'm Brad Bullock for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Now there's lots more to learn about making high quality hay. So for more information on New Holland's round balers and their complete line of products, visit cattlemen to cattlemen.org. If you're thinking about buying a new piece of New Holland equipment, now is the time. New Holland has partnered with the National Cattlemen's Beef Association to offer all NCBA members exclusive discounts of up to $3,500 on their equipment. For all the details on this great incentive, just visit our website at cattlemen2cattlemen.org. If you aren't an NCBA member yet, joining is easy. Just give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or email us at c 2 c at beef.org. Then you'll be eligible to take advantage of these great New Holland discounts. We'll be right back. Tough trailers built for tough country. Big Ben Trailers manufactures a different kind of trailer, one that's built to put up with the rough conditions found on the ranch. Rugged built using heavy gauge powder coated steel and a two by four rectangle tube frame. There's a one inch gap between the side and floor, so there's no place for water or manure to accumulate and rust. Big Ben Trailers are loaded with standard features, a lever action hitch, a three foot escape gate and a middle sorting gate, rhino lining along the front edges and a receiver hitch to tow another trailer, chute, or other equipment. Tough and practical, that's Big Ben Trailers. Designed and built by a working cattleman, you can rely on and trust Big Ben Trailers for their durability and convenient features. Reasonably priced for any rancher to afford. For a list of dealers and other design features, visit BigBenTrailers.com. Big Ben Trailers, built cattlemen tough. Welcome back. 
Today, less than 2% of America's workforce is engaged in farming, and less than 1% of the entire gross domestic product is specifically related to agriculture. One group is working to improve those statistics by promoting the positive message of agriculture and ensuring the farming and ranching way of life will be around for generations to come. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter has more from our nation's capital. Why is ag important? As I try to explain and remind the folks I serve with here in the United States Congress, agriculture, rural America for that matter, only matters if you like to eat. It's quite that simple. Hundreds of people gathered in Washington, D.C. to celebrate the 40th annual National Ag Day. The event is designed to empower and equip those who were involved in the agriculture industry to share its positive message with consumers. The National Ag Day is a great opportunity to really allow American agriculture to tell our story to every consumer out there, to all of our fellow countrymen, to let them know that the great meal that they have, the great clothes that they're wearing, are all the result of the hardworking farmers and ranchers in this country. I think the most important part about National Ag Day is to educate people and let them know where their food comes from and how how, um, and who's the people who are actually presenting it and making that food for them? Uneducated consumers can be agriculture's greatest stumbling block, but educated consumers are agriculture's greatest cheerleaders. So this is a great way for us to reach out to consumers and um, share agriculture's story. Special guest speakers included Representative Frank Lucas, Chairman of the House Ag Committee, U.S. Secretary of Agriculture Tom Vilsack, and even a former Miss America. We've got a huge responsibility to do that, to kind of connect urban and rural America, to bring people back to their roots, where so many times we buy food, we eat food with no thought about where it has been, where it has come from, and the people that are at the heart of agriculture in our country. The theme for this year's Ag Day celebration was Generations Nourishing Generations. And there were over 100 young people from all over the country who came to find new ways to make a difference in the future of the agriculture industry. When I think about agriculture and informing the young people, I think that we need to inform them because if we don't, we're not going to have a future in agriculture. There is unlimited opportunity for young people. So that's the message I think we ought to be conveying. And we ought to be conveying it enthusiastically and proudly because we have a great story to tell. With the need to feed 9 billion people by 2045, attendees were also discussing the importance of making decisions that promote a sustainable future in the ag industry. We're going to have to produce more food, more crops, more livestock to be able to take care of this growing population. And then not only that, people as their incomes increase, which they are around the world, they're demanding better protein, better food, so we're going to have to figure out how to do that. If you are concerned about the moral challenge of our lifetime, which is how you feed an ever-increasing world population, uh, then you need to be involved in agriculture and you need to think about opportunities in rural America because that's where that problem is going to get solved. Reporting from Washington, D.C., I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. The National Cattlemen's Beef Association is a proud supporter of National Ag Day. You can also help ensure the beef industry is around for future generations to enjoy. Become an NCBA member today. Joining is easy. Just call 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit BeefUSA. Org. There's no better source of beef in industry information than from the people who are immersed in it every single day. And here in the studio to give us some insight on the packing sector of the industry is Bill Rupp. He's the president of the beef division for JBS. Bill, thanks for coming to the show. Thank you. Well, you have a real catbird seat in our industry and get a chance to talk to a lot of folks up and down the value chain. Give us your perspective of the state of the beef industry. It's a tough industry right now. You know, if you think about it, graphically, if you think about it, we've got a declining calf crop, mm -hmm. probably largely due to the drought conditions we've experienced throughout the country. And, and as a result of that, we've got uh, overcapacity in our feeding sector. And we've got overcapacity in our packing sector. And, you know, while, while for some segments of the industry that overcapacity creates, uh, creates a little windfall, I, I think if we think of it in terms of being one industry, mm -hmm. um, our, our industry is not healthy today. And, and that increased volatility we have due to that lack of capacity 
really probably creates uncertainty. It's the uncertainty if I'm a cow-calf guy, should I grow my herd? Mm -hmm. if, if Mother Nature allows me to, should I grow my herd? Mm -hmm. It's that uncertainty, should I feature beef if I'm that retailer? Should I open another restaurant if I'm that food service operator? Should I hire more employees if I'm that packer? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of uncertainty in the beef industry right now. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that is a key word. And uh, from JBS's perspective, uh, you know, you play a, a huge role in the, the global meat business period. Give folks at home some perspective about the role JBS does play in the sure. global protein business. Yeah, I, I think from a macro perspective, JBS is, is excited to be a leader in the beef industry. We look at a that at an economy that while sometimes here at home we feel like it's sputtering or sluggish, you know, globally there, there's lots of growth happening. There's a, there's a middle class that's, that's growing globally. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we find through history that as those middle classes grow, they desire to trade up in proteins. Mm -hmm. They go from vegetable proteins to meat proteins and, and ultimately to beef. To beef yeah. So I think, you know, as we stand back and look at the macro picture, mm -hmm. as JBS looks at, at continuing to invest in the global beef industry, it's an exciting future. I would agree. And from JBS's perspective, as you think about the relationship you've had for a long while with NCBA, uh, why do you find that relationship so important? You know, at times we can be a bit dysfunctional as an industry. Sometimes sometimes our, our motivations aren't always the same, or sometimes one person's motivation is a demotivator to another s section of the, of the industry. And I think that's the importance of NCBA. NCBA really they are the critical link in aligning our industry and they keep the dialogue going sometimes when we find that dialogue a little difficult so I, I, I always have time for those folks and I think going forward their role is going to become more and more important because as a as a beef industry we have to realize our competition isn't within our industry mm -hmm. our competition is those other guys that are trying to take our share of that consumers pocketbook that's a great point. Thank you so much for coming to the show and sharing your perspective. You're welcome. For more information on JBS or to learn more about beef packers, just log on to our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. We'll be right back. cost forage and improve grazing access by clearing out weeds and brush with these Dow AgroSciences herbicides. See your Dow AgroSciences representative or visit rangeandpasture.com. I'm Kevin Oxter, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Check us out at cattlemantocattlemen.org or on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. Competitors on the rodeo circuit can't afford to have an off day. It will affect their standing and their pocketbook. The same thing goes for ranchers. You need to be on the top of your game every day. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter traveled to Cross Plains, Texas to see how one rancher's experience and never-ending enthusiasm lays the foundation for his personal and professional success. Professional steer wrestler and rancher Matt Reeves has a definite formula for success. You need to ride a good horse and uh, you need to capitalize on opportunities. Um, stay healthy, stay fit, um, do all the things that there is to do. Know, know what fits you and go from there. After many years of training, hard work and dedication to his craft, Matt is enjoying the rewards of his profession. I've rodeoed since I was a kid. I started steer wrestling in high school. This year was the best year I've ever had. It's been amazing. I qualified for every finals I could qualify for this year. And so that was interesting from the CFR, NFR, All-American finals, our circuit finals, and I'm winning the circuit again. So it looks like I should qualify for the DNC and 
Out of the spotlight, Matt brings that same passion and preparation for the rodeo to his responsibilities on the family ranch in Central Texas. I analyze everything deeply, whether it's a four second bulldog and run or a three second bulldog and run or whether it's looking at the cattle and paying attention to which ones look different than they did yesterday. In my job here on the operation as far as looking after the cattle and taking care of them and, and being the day to day uh, eyes, being very detail oriented and being very uh, a analyzing what they look like today compared to what they look like yesterday is very important. So that's a big deal. Along with evaluating the outward signs of his blended herd's health daily, Matt faithfully follows a parasite management program to help ensure their overall well-being. Most of the profit loss that you see in an operation are things you don't see, whether it's your man bought yearlings that were already sick or whether it's other things. You, you're not going to walk out and see bacteria and you're not going to walk out and see parasites. If you walk, if you, if you see parasite problems in your herd, you have a major problem. One of Matt's top herd health practices is teaming up with Dectamax to prevent and control parasites. We worry about making sure that we have a good deworming program simply due to the fact that they are all commingled. As we process, we deworm everything with Dectamax. Uh, it seems to be the best product that we've found to take care of all the internal and external parasites. Um, Dectamax just works good as far as getting a good kill on the parasites that we see in the area and from the areas that our cattle come from. Matt knows that parasites can eat away at his profits by negatively affecting appetites and restricting the absorption of essential nutrients. We want to clean them out. So that, we have, so that they have the ability to gain the max amount of weight that they can. We want to increase our average daily gain and increase our gain here. Um, the, the more blood flow they lose, the more nutrients they lose because of the parasites. Uh, it's not a symbiotic relationship, it's a parasitic relationship. So we, we need to make sure that we take care of those things so that we don't have to worry uh, about lost income from lost gain. Working with his father-in-law, Sam King, Matt applies Dectamax as part of their processing. In the warm months, they apply Dectamax Poron. In the fall and winter, they switch to Dectamax Injectable. The biggest strength in Dectamax that I see is the fact that we get a wonderful control on the internal and external parasites. During the spring and summer and early fall here before the freeze, we have great control of the external parasites, whether it's horn flies or biting flies, and then, of course, we have great control of all internal parasites. Uh, we really like, we like to use the injectable on the urlins when we can. Dectamax treats and controls the parasites that negatively influence all areas of cattle health from a loss of animal productivity to a lowered immune response to visible external symptoms. We don't want to leave any money out in the pasture and that's the main thing whether you're running cows and calves or whether you're running yearlings. If you have a good strong parasitic program on your cows you produce more milk, you wean heavier calves. You wind up with more profitability because of higher average daily gains once we get here. More pounds is more dollars. Matt and his family have been such believers in Dectamax that Matt now wears Dectamax on his sleeve in the competitions. Well, these are products we use and that's a good thing. And so being involved with them and being in the print and being in the, on the television, it's, it's simple when you believe in what you're talking about. Both in the chute and on the circuit, Matt recognizes what results he wants and how to achieve them. Rodeo and ranching have, have gone well and worked hand in hand and been good to us. I get to do what I wanted to do when they asked me when I was in third grade, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I wanted to rodeo and I wanted to take and I wanted to run cattle and that's what I get to do. So there's not very many people that get to do that. In Cross Plains, Texas, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Matt is competing now, so be sure to look him up when he comes to your area. We wish you the very best, Matt. And if you'd like to learn more about Zoetis and Dectamax, just visit our website. That's cattlemanthecattleman.org. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
this business can take time away and become more of your family than your actual family. My days were tough. I had a lot of doctoring, a lot of pulling. Now our days on the feed yard are happy days. It's more about looking at the cattle and enjoying what we're producing versus the alternative which is pull and tree and bang our head against the wall. We have never wavered from Draxon. We've seen the benefits just keep getting better and better. No storm is too powerful for Neopurina wind and rain storm minerals, formulated with ultimate weather resistance. That means more minerals in the feeder and available to your cattle. Wind and rain storm minerals provide more consistent intake and balanced mineral nutrition to optimize herd health and breedback rates. See the difference at your local Purina dealer or visit CattleNutrition.com. Wind and rain storm minerals, another way Purina is building better cattle. At the end of a long, hard day, there's nothing better than coming home to a big, juicy steak dinner. And it's even better with a little bit of a twist. Here in the studio to show us a great way to spice it up is NCBA chef Laura Hagen. Lauren, you, you, you have a, a, a flat iron, I think, for us today. Is I that do. Right? Yep, I do. This picked it up at the grocery store. Okay. Super, super easy. The nice thing about these flat irons is oftentimes in your local grocery store, they have them in vacuum packages. Okay. So it lasts a little bit longer. Sure. You can keep it in the fridge. Works really well in the freezer. So if you want to, you know, find them on sale and sure. get them and put them in the freezer, it will prevent that freezer burn because there's no air in there. So I have a, this one's probably about 12 ounces. Okay. So it's a pretty good size. It's not something sure. you're going to cook up and just eat yourself. Right. Um, more than likely you cook this probably, or cut this up into probably two or three portions. Sure. Um, we like to give about four ounces raw, three ounces cooked mm -hmm. of beef um, in our recipes mm -hmm. and for um, portion control. Makes a great steak. Yeah. So there all I go. did is cut this up into four pieces. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the skillet that I cooked the steaks in. Okay, so you about, just cooked yep. them on stove top. I put, pressed a little pepper yep. into the uh, steaks themselves and then I put all four in the skillet. Sure. Medium hot, Okay. about 12 to 14 minutes. Yep. You gotta be a little careful and you gotta play around a little bit with temperature when sure. you're, you wanna get a good sear on it right, right away, get that right. nice uh, caramelized color, you bet. but then turn it down a little bit so okay. that it can cook through. Yep. What we're going to do now is we're going to create our mustard ah, bourbon sauce. Very good. That sounds good. Yeah. So we t here's the skillet, as I said. Yep. We just have it on very low temperature. Right. If you can see, there's a little bit of brown here. Oh, sure. Um, I've already worked on the sauce a little bit. Okay. But what we're doing is we're deglazing. Ah. So when you add liquid to a pan that you've cooked in, mm -hmm. your, your real goal is just to pick up all that good bits. Those mm -hmm. are all those uh, kind of reduced be uh, yeah. bits of beef, beef that have been cooked. Makes it tasty. Yeah. And we're just going to work that around. I would probably, with this one, add a little bit more liquid, maybe okay. a little bit more cream or even a little water, just to loosen it a little bit. So your glaze is made up of what again? This is mustard. mustard? So it's a Dijon mustard. Oh, yeah. Bourbon. Hmm. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, I know, I know. And a little bit of um, heavy whipping cream. Oh, you're kidding me. So it gives it a little bit of uh, that thickness. Yeah. This is reduced a little bit, so as you see, it's getting kind of thick yes. at this point. And then I would serve my flat iron probably with the sauce, yeah. and then maybe a green vegetable like a broccolini yeah. or broccoli or green beans or something like that. So our finished product is right there. It looks absolutely delicious and smells better. Thanks so much for this great idea. You're very welcome. For this recipe and other great tasting beef recipes, just log on to our website at cattlemanthecattleman.org. Join producers from around the country at the 2014 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Nashville, Tennessee. It's an event that, that we will never miss. I love seeing the enthusiasm. I think it's great. It's perfect combination and the perfect time to hold the NCBA convention. Join your fellow cattlemen for the latest cattle industry news, education, networking, and fun. Plus, at the NCBA Trade Show, get the latest in industry technology for the cattle business. This trade show is one of the best trade shows that is out there. It's amazing the amount of industry and businesses that come here to be a part and, 
and there's no other place that for those of us as beat producers can go to have this much information in one place. So follow me to Tennessee for the 2014 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Nashville, February 4th through the 7th. Learn more at beefusa.org. I'm an NCBA member. I'm an NCBA member because I think uh, as an advocacy group, NCBA has done some great things for our industry and I kind of feel compelled to, to give back some of what they've done for us. Because this organization is looking out for cattle producers. They understand what makes our cow-calf business profitable. Join me today. Join me today. Join NCBA today. Head to BeefUSA.org or call 866-USA-BEEF. Let's face it, you don't think a lot about your trailer hitch. You use it and forget it. We understand, but at B&W, we think about it. Short nights, long hauls, never-ending chores, the unthinkable. We think about it all, so you don't have to. B&W. Trusted. So why do you care if your cattle are source and age verified? Better yet, do you think the housewife cares? Well, 70% of consumers surveyed want to know where their food comes from. So where do you start? With this little green ear tag. IMI Global the seal of approval that stands behind the beef you produced. IMI is engaged in source and age verification from the cow man to the kitchen table. So if you're ready to start, just ask us. IMIGlobal.com. They don't call it Death Valley for nothing. And coyotes don't make a good pet. And living out here with the grizz and the deer pretty much take what you get. And the mountains have shoulders like granite. They're big and they make their own rules. So take what you need, but you better pay heed because the mountain don't tolerate fools. And the wind is the moan of the prairie that haunts and bedevils the plains, the soul-stealing kind that can fray a man's mind till only a whimper remains. And you can stand in the canyon's cathedral where water and sky never rest and know in your bones that the meek on their own will never inherit the West. It's big and it's wild and it's lonesome where the dream of first blood still survives, and it beckons to those who can bid adios to the comfort of eight to five lives. So come, all you brave caballeros, cinch up and reach down inside till you feel the heat, and then take a deep seat, because the West, boys, she ain't broke to ride. You can climb on her back. If you do, do your best, cause she's gonna put your true grip to the test. For the West Boys, she ain't broke to ride. For the West Boys, she ain't broke to ride. Thanks, Baxter, and we'll be right back. To stay up to date on beef industry news and the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, check out BeefUSA.org. 
You'll find news on both the Federation of State Beef Councils and the work of NCBA on Capitol Hill. Plus, link to NCBA programs like the blog, Beltway Beef, updates on the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show, and the latest from NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Connect today at BeefUSA.org. NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen is your source for industry updates that impact your operation. The National Cattlemen's Beef Association is continuing its fight against the so-called death tax. Hear from congressional members on important issues. Learn about the best practices for beef quality assurance and visit operations from around the country. All in one hour. NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern on RFD-TV. Welcome back. Have you ever dreamed of owning a brand new John Deere Gator? Well, now's your chance. The National Cattlemen's Beef Association is conducting an online sealed auction for a 2013 John Deere Gator XUV. And bidding is simple. Just visit BeefUSA.org and click on the John Deere Gator to fill out a form. But hurry, the auction closes on May 15th at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. All proceeds will support NCBA's policy division. There's nothing we enjoy more each week than taking a few minutes to look at the beautiful farm and ranch photos from our loyal viewers. Let's take a look at this week's Legacy Photos. To submit your photo and maybe see it in a future episode, just visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. Join us next week for a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Experts from Dow AgriSciences will be in the studio talking about forage management. And we'll also take a look at some of the best products available to ensure high quality forage. Well, that does it for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll see you right back here next week on RFD-TV.